Hello, I'm James Dilley, experimental archaeologist and flint napper. For this video, I'll be looking at stone bladed sickles and the role they played in prehistoric farming and the Neolithic. A sickle is a specialised tool for cutting handfuls of grass stems. It's a tool that would be commonly associated with farming. But was it just farmers that used these tools? Modern cereal crops might look very different to their wild cousins, but they're all grasses, they're all part of the same family, Poaceae. Hunter-gatherers harvested wild grains to supplement their seasonal diet, and they may have even stored them. It's not technically farming because they're not actually planting or cultivating the wild grains, they are just gathering them, so it's quite different. The problem for the start of our sickle story is that if these hunter-gatherers actually used tools that were anything like sickles, they were probably just laminar blades that were either used in the hand or might have even been set into some kind of handle, but it's quite difficult to tell whether the individual blades were actually used for specifically harvesting grain or whether they were for cutting any other plant material. With the arrival of farming in the Neolithic, we see the development of more specialised tools for turning the ground and harvesting crops, such as the sickle. Some groups continued to use blades, some with serrated edges and set into handles. In other regions, people made single bladed examples in a crescent moon shape. Examples of prehistoric sickle handles have been found in Europe, North Africa and the Levant. The two commonly represented materials are wood and bone. Some are blade-based, while others, such as a Copper Age example from Solferino, Italy, had several bifacial blades. A strangely shaped sickle was found at the Swiss lake site of Fennel. A straight piece of wood with triangular flint teeth set in a groove made it appear like a shark's jaw. Accounts from Egypt suggest horse jaw bones were often used once the teeth had been removed and replaced with flint blades. Farming in the early Neolithic would have been really tough. The tools were simple, but to be effective required a great deal of time investment and hard work to actually make them effective. It had been long thought that the arrival of the Neolithic and farming brought a great deal of positives to humans, but not all of them were. People were able to start storing food in preparation for lean seasons, but hunter-gatherers had been doing this for a long period of time with a variety of foodstuffs beforehand. With the amount of time put into creating and setting up farms and keeping animals, all the eggs were in one basket. Failed crops and disease in livestock could have a disastrous effect, and communities that lived in the Middle East and Anatolia in Turkey suffered problems with the decline in soil fertility, drought, disease, and building social pressure, which was all contributing to the downsides of farming. However, if there was a good harvest, that bumper crop could support a growing population. But more grain meant more grinding to turn it into meal flour. That grinding was done on flat stones called querns with a rubbing stone. The action of moving the grindstone back and forth for hours on end left a visible mark on the bones of some people, demonstrating another con of the farming revolution. There are clearly very different techniques and methods employed in the production of these two quite different sickle blades. One's blade based and one is bifacial, flaked on both sides as a single blade. Both methods require a reasonable degree of flint napping skill. Many blades can be produced from one core, each a single strike, while a bifacial sickle blade like this can take some time to produce. Both can be set into a handle in a similar way, which requires a groove to inset the blade. Some kind of glue would be needed to secure the blade, and in the case of most prehistoric glues, heat is required to melt it. 
Due to the speed at which laminar blades can be made, a blunt sickle could be held over the fire, the glue melts, the blade drops out, and fresh blades could be fitted. A 10 minute resharpening job. Single bifacial sickles would need to be reflaked, probably by a pressure flaker, which would take about the same amount of time. Cutting through dry grass stems might sound a simple and untaxing task for a sharp stone blade, but when that stone blade has to cut through hundreds or even thousands of stems, it starts to look like a tougher task. Surely stone is much harder than straw, you might ask, and you'd be correct. But within the straw, like many plant fibres, is a material that we can also find in the stone, silica. The silica in that straw will blunt a sickle over time as it cuts away. The fragile but razor-sharp edge of a stone blade would soon be blunted, so a serrated edge is preferable as it tends to last longer. Thankfully those serrations are easy to create. Often another stone edge cutting the teeth into the would-be sickle is enough. It is not just the blade edge that would come into contact with the crop straw. The silica filled stems would also scrape across the surface of the stone blade, leaving striations and polish. The late Neolithic site of Luka Vrubelvetskaya yielded a large number of unretouched flint blades with very obvious polish on the dorsal and ventral faces. Due to the large number of these blades and the consistency of the polish, it was clear that they had been used for a single action. The size and spread of the polish also indicated the blades had been hafted and an abrupt end to that polish suggested where the tool handle began. As you can see from this use wear analysis photo, small scratch marks on the surface of the blades indicated they had been used in one direction and based on the likely handle position towards the user. Researcher S.A. Semenov was able to demonstrate these blades were used as sickles in his 1950s research. Since then, use wear analysis has become an important tool in the understanding of stone tool use. It's likely that simple flake tools also served as sickles. Serrated flint flakes from the early Neolithic sites of Windmill Hill and Whitehawk Camp displayed polish that was consistent with cutting plant matter. So why do these finely made composite sickles exist, while some groups got by okay with far simpler tools? Could it be access to raw material or something more? We understand the concept of having pride in finely made tools today, but did people really have the same belief in the past? The sickle shape that won the day, however, was the crescent moon shape that was eventually cast in bronze, forged in iron, and eventually steel. <laughs>